<clears throat> so leave this uh, slide on, and I just want to make w one other comment of Ellen's slide, and that is when you think of energy transition, don't think something replaces something else. These were all additive. <laughs> Okay, number one. Number two, the time scale for adding was about a half a century. And so if you now think you want to replace something, you have to realize that's a deeper challenge. Okay? You know, natural gas added to coal. Petroleum added to natural gas and coal. And so on and so forth. Okay, so um, let me move on and um, look at some other things that have been happening that is new, uh, new wild cards in the transition. And this is Beijing on a bad air day. <clears throat> uh, and what people are finding out is particulate matter, especially the smallest particulate matter, is especially deadly. And in uh, a large epidemiology study, Lancet Oncology 2013, there are larger ones now in progress, where they followed 300,000 people for over 12 years they found a hazard ratio. That, so for every five micrograms per cubic meter of PM2.5, you have an 18% higher chance of getting lung cancer, which uh, today is still largely fatal. <clears throat> so the average air in Beijing in 2016 is 76 micrograms per cubic meter. And so we don't really know how it actually uh, scales with lung cancer. You can't just simply take 1.18 uh, uh, and raise it to the, you know, 12th power. Uh, it does saturate. There are people who can breathe this stuff and will never get lung cancer, just as you can smoke two packages of cigarettes a day and you won't get it. But, but the, uh, the odds on bed is it appears that you might be 25 times more likely. Just like it's worse than smoking a package of cigarettes a day, except everybody smokes. Now, more recently, um, and this was in a Nature commentary of last year, um, the World Health Organization guideline, by the way, is 10 micrograms per cubic meter. That's considered clean air. But if you look at the epidemiology study, that means there's roughly a 40% chance higher that you will get lung cancer. Okay? So, you know, we don't treat radiation this way. I'm not sure why we're treating this stuff this way. But if you look at that, the estimates of the people who die uh, from particulate matter is, for, in this is four and a half million, it's really going north of five and six million. And within the next 10 years, probably north of 10 million a year, because you don't get it immediately. There's a long gestation period, just like in cigarette smoking, of a couple of decades. So this is something new. And the, uh, the levels of what we consider healthy is very, very new. So that's rapidly changing. We talked about coal. Uh, we heard a lot about coal. but. The first thing you really should ask yourselves are where are all these pollutants coming from? And so there's SOX, there's NOx, there's... Now, in many places, they don't actually track PM2.5. They've been tracking PM10, for example, in Europe, not PM2.5, but it's only been the last decade that PM2.5 is noted to be much more dangerous. So if you look at these colors, in SOX, it's dominated by power plants and especially coal, the orange. If you look at NOx, it's only 23% from power plants. Most of it's from vehicles. And that's the stuff that was causing asthma. And if you look at the PM 2.5, it's from a lot of things. So, so indeed, power plants uh, and coal plants are a major contributor. But for many of these pollutants, uh, the transportation sector, which is roughly half our energy use in the United States, uh, is a major contributor as well. So getting rid of coal is not going it's, to, it's a big help, but it's not going to cure the problem. We have satellite measurements of PM2.5. We have satellite measurements of NOx and SOx. And so these are ongoing. And this is where uh, you can see where they're located uh, for PM2.5. Um, you ask, you know, how has progress been made in the recent decades? There's a picture of satellite measurement in 2005 of where the uh, sulfur dioxide. So sulfur dioxide is dominated by coal emissions, and you see that you, these big blotches are in China. 2016, China has really cleaned up a lot of the socks. They put in big-time scrubbers. They're closing all their old power plants. And by the way, uh, for the United States, the Clean Air Act of 1990 from Bush 1 actually grandfathered in all the coal plants that didn't have SOX and NOx scrubbers thinking that, heck, you know, in 10 or 20 years, they'll be gone. 
they're still here because they're totally depreciated. Band-Aids keep them going. And this is the most important thing, is to close those 30% thermodynamic efficiency knocks and socks with no, no scrubbers. It's like you have a jalopy, you're allowed to run it forever. Uh, there is no smog test. So anyway, so what we see here is that it's shifting very rapidly from China to India. And India is now going to be passing China as we speak in NOx and SOx emission. Um, <clears throat> and again, satellites allow us to do this. The left-hand view is satellite data that corroborates very well with ground measurements. So I'm not going to go into the details, but just to, just to say that on a per-person basis, and even on an absolute basis, uh, China has been very, very active in decreasing the amount of SOx and NOx. Um, this is the Chinese carbon dioxide emissions because the other massive grill in the room, of course, is carbon dioxide from 1990 to 2016. And you see that uh, carbon dioxide has peaked up to 2016. Coal is beginning to go down. Uh, the good news is, um, and all the major oil companies, multinational oil companies around the world, are realizing that their future for the next, at least next couple of decades, is to actually explore for natural gas. Natural gas used to be a pure byproduct of oil, but now they're going after natural gas because they're figuring it can begin to replace coal. Natural gas is now re higher than coal in terms of electricity generation in the United States. To the extent it can be done in other countries remains, it's a complicated thing. You'll have to store the natural gas in underground caverns and things like that. But anyway, so this is uh, what China's been doing. Sadly, in 17 and 18, their carbon emissions have gone up. And again, um, I'm going to skip this slide because I'm over. But this is U.S. Uh, what's happening with NOx, CO2, SOx. Uh, and as the, it's dominated, the no, SOx and the NOx mercury uh, is dominated by coal. And so that's the other thing. As we use less coal, uh, this is going down. But the vehicle emissions is now the next major thing. And in fact, it dominates in NOx. So with that, I'll stop.